What's up, Brooklyn Squad? It's your girl, Jay, and I'm back at it again with another video. But today, we're going to talk about Daniel Robinson. Five facts about the Daniel Robinson that you cannot ignore. It's a little different, though. So, hit subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when Brooklyn Squad is dropping another video. Also, tell your friends about the video. Share these videos. Victims matter. These victims matter need more publicity. We need to share these videos, get these videos out. We need justice, justice, justice. Okay. Cheryl Nation is one of my friends and I'm proud to say that. Okay. She has been subscribed to my channel for a very long time and I have been subscribed to her channel for a very long time, but more than subscribe, we are friends behind the scene. Okay. We text each other, we inspire each other. She's just one of those loving people that one will keep it 100 with you, okay? She's not going to co-sign your shit, which I love about her. But she lifts you, and she supports what you do, and she checks up on you. She's a loving, caring person. But besides that, your girl can break stuff down. Now, she old nation. If you don't know who she is, you're missing out. She's a content creator. She's a YouTuber as well. I'm going to put her link down below. So please subscribe to her channel. But she breaks things down to the core. Okay? When I tell you she did the Daniel Robinson, oh, she did her thing. Okay? And we're going to look into it. And we're going to, show, matter of fact, we're going to let her tell it. Check this out. And if you don't know who Danny Robinson is, I put a video out on him. He was the young man that was missing, and he still is missing. And she has been talking about this case from day one, and that's how I got to know about him. His father has a YouTube channel, and he's still looking for justice. And the police is doing nothing. Listen to a show nation. This is one of her videos. I'm sure she wouldn't mind me showing her video. This is one of her videos. And please subscribe to her channel. But I want you to take a look at how she breaks it down. Check this out. Ignore about the Daniel Robinson case. What's up, YouTube? My name is Shiro, and welcome to my channel, where I talk all things true crime, missing persons, and I share the untold stories of those in the Black community that need more attention. If you're new here, I want to welcome you. Come on in. Come on in. Feel free to suss out my vibe. See if you like it. And if you do, hit that subscribe button. If you are a returning so subscriber, <laughs> you already know. What's up, fam? So good to have you back in the virtual space once again. And I appreciate you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your continued support. Daniel Robinson is a 25-year-old geologist who went missing on June 23rd, 2021 after leaving his work site in the Arizona desert. If you haven't yet, check out the full story in the link below. Here are some facts about the case that are sure to leave you scratching your head. Number one, ghosted by his employer. Daniel Robinson is a geologist who worked for Matrix New World Engineering in Phoenix, Arizona. Though he allegedly went missing on duty after leaving his work site in the Arizona desert, the company didn't post about the disappearance of their employee for seven months. Daniel went missing on June 23rd, 2021, but his employer didn't publicize his disappearance on either of their two social media accounts. Hold up. Wait a minute. February 3rd, 2022, which was National Missing Persons Day. They even had the audacity to include in the post, we stand with his family and friends and are committed to continue the search to locate him. How's that? And what exactly do they mean by committed? Because by definition, to be committed to something means A, to carry out or perpetrate, B, to pledge or bind to a certain course or policy, or C, to be dedicated to something. Now, it has been confirmed that in the beginning, a few employees from the company joined a couple searches here and there. Well, let's just say I personally have a problem with this. 
I would have expected more. Someone even went as far as to create a new Instagram page back in October of 2021 in the company's name. I guess that was supposed to signify support in the search for Daniel. Well, that didn't last long. They posted a few photos over the course of 10 weeks and kept it moving. And by the way, the whole point of supporting an effort on your page is so that the current following on your page sees your post. Duh. It appears they may have just been covering their asses just in case someone came around later and asked, hey, why aren't you guys searching for Daniel? And that way they could look like they were being the responsible people they aren't. Number two, allegedly, the job had no safety protocol for their remote workers. Though it's a small firm with about 50 to 200 employees, in September of 2021, Matrix New World Engineering was listed in the top 200 environmental firms by ENR, the engineering news record online magazine. According to recordreach.com, it has a current revenue of approximately $32 million. So it appears, financially, they're doing okay for a growing company. Mm -hmm. But even though they made a monetary donation in search for Daniel, they have never formed a search party of their own to look for him. Mind you, this is a job which required him to work in remote areas such as the one he was last seen. And there is no evidence to support Daniel even went missing on his own accord. And therefore, the possibility he was injured on or abducted from his job site still exists. Allegedly, Matrix New World had no protocol in place for their remote workers to actively verify their location while on duty and has not assumed responsibility for Daniel's disappearance. They have not shown an active interest in this case and the effort they put forth well, at least in my opinion, seems a little bit more political in a sense. Like, let's make an effort just so we don't look like buttholes. But my point is that they failed him twice. First, by not taking measures to ensure his safety. And second, by not initiating the effort to look for him as soon as he went missing. Number three, if the co-worker says it happened, it must be true. It appears that the entire focus and direction of Daniel's disappearance is solely based off one man's account. Daniel's co-worker, who admits to seeing Daniel on the morning he went missing. Apparently, the Buckeye Police Department has great confidence in his testimony, which in turn, in my opinion, has had a major impact on the direction of this case. But there were contradictions in his statement to investigators with reference to the timeline of events and what happened the morning Daniel disappeared. For some unknown reason, Kent's inaccuracies don't seem to raise a big enough red flag to law enforcement. Unfortunately, in my opinion, their belief in his testimony plays a large part in why this investigation is still considered to be just a missing persons case. Because think about it, if his story doesn't uphold, it would unravel every theory they've come up with to this point. And that would mean that he could be withholding information, thus making him a person of interest and therefore heavily support the argument that Buckeye needs to open up a criminal investigation. If he were... You know what? Never mind. I just want to know, why is it that in some cases you find that just because a particular person says something and appears to be a nice person, law enforcement will write it up as the gospel and conduct their entire investigation based off the testimony of one individual? As in the Lauren Smithfields case, when law enforcement let this random guy walk out of her apartment without mm. properly questioning him. Because hey. I remember according that to case. them... Such a nice guy. Right. And even after finding evidence in her apartment contradicting his statements, nothing was done about it. Mm -hmm. So, in this situation, Daniel's co worker to gets to be case. the nice guy who seems like he's telling the truth. And even when it's brought to the attention of the authorities that his story doesn't add up, it just gets ignored. That's the frustration we are dealing with here. But keep in mind that all of this information is alleged. So, therefore, I nor anyone else privy to this book gets sued. Number four, law enforcement lied. Not only did the Buckeye Police Department enter Daniel into the National Missing Persons database two weeks later than they said they did, they also did not fill out very important details about Daniel's description that a person would need if they needed to check the website and verify his identity. As many of you know, Daniel is missing his right arm. Though nowhere in the description does it say this. As a matter of fact, they just left this part blank. And photo images of Daniel were not updated to the national website until July 9th. That was also the first time ever that a picture of his vehicle had been posted to the site as well. Number five, the Buckeye Police Department has psychic powers. If you go to the BuckeyeAZ.gov website under the Daniel Robinson investigation overview and scroll down to July 9th, you will see a map of the aerial search the Buckeye Police Department claims to have conducted on that day. But what you will also notice is the distinct marking indicating
indicating the location of Daniel's work site and another, showing the location of where Daniel's Jeep was found. Though it wasn't until 10 days later on July 19th, the Jeep was actually found. At least that's the information that was put out to the public. So mm. how exactly did Buckeye know the location of where the Jeep would be found so far ahead of time? I think I know. All I gave her was my name and my birthday, and she started telling me everything that was going on. I mean, if all you need is a name and a birthday, either one of them is psychic or they called one. Duh. As a community, we have the right to demand answers. And I'm in no way anti-law enforcement. I am only anti-corruption. My people deserve better. What are your thoughts about all this? If you would like to catch up on everything I've covered thus far, the links will be provided to you below. Also, the family could use your help. One thing that's needed more than anything right now are your donations. If you would like to find other ways you can support, go to pleasehelpfinddaniel.com. I'll be sure to leave the access link below. Oh, my girl hit those five facts about the death. Please note that my views on how law enforcement and others have responded to this case are strictly my opinion and does not in any way reflect or speak on behalf of the Robinson family. Every judgment or criticism that I make is independent of the family's views. I speak for myself and I take full accountability for anything I say on this channel. To stay up to date and get real-time notifications on this case and more, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a beat. Until next Next time, love hard on the ones you love, stay around people who make you smile, and make it your mission to laugh as much as you can. May your heart always be super, super full until your joy spill over. And until next time, my name is Shiro, and I'm out. I love her. She broke down the five facts you will find hard to ignore about the Daniel Robinson case. And there's more. I mean, there's so much more. Why would the police not put about his missing arm in that database? That is something that cannot be ignored. That, that is a very important detail. And then wait so long to even put him in the database. And not only that, not only that, they haven't even helped the father at all, y'all. They haven't helped the father at all. I believe um, when this first started, they gave the father back the keys or something they gave the father back and the dad was like, why would you give that back to me? That's evidence, like... The cops are running very, very, very grimy on this case. Very, very sneaky. There was also a witness that lied and said that he was an investigator or something like that. Quote, unquote, don't quote on me. And we found out he really wasn't. He was there with his son. I think he was doing, he was, um doing trigger practice, shooting practice or whatever he said. And Daniel asked him not to do it over there if he could do a little farther away. It was just weird, okay? It was weird. Uh, they were supposed to be had talked to that guy, you know, the cops said, but no, no. Then we got the, the, the females that... Uh, Daniel was supposed to be had met up with. It's just everything is 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 very weird. I do want to do uh a live actually on this case, um. But of course, I want my girl Sharon Nation to talk about it with me on here because she has been in here on this case faithfully. You know what I mean. And there's just so much more. Like I said, his father is still, still out there. Still out there in Arizona looking for his son. He's found skeleton heads out there. That wasn't his son, but, you know, it was other families that lost their loved ones. So he was able to help other families. 
that was looking for their loved ones. Wow. Oh, justice for Danny Robinson. Please hit subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, I will put Sharon Nation's information in the comments and everything. Please subscribe to her channel. And thank you, everyone, for being so supportive. I really do appreciate it. And also, check out my shorts as well and my playlist. My playlist is in categories.